Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to acquire all the new exotic chest plates that dropped with Season of the Chosen. Now as has been happening, it's kind of been the way Bungie's been doing it since Beyond Light dropped within Destiny 2, they are to be farmed within Lost Sectors, Master and Legend Lost Sectors. Now you have to wait until the reward is an exotic chest plate, which it will show on the banner for the Lost Sector, but that is how you do it. You make sure that the the reward is a chest plate. Now I've done these on K1 Crew Quarters, which was the Legend Law Sector yesterday, because it was a chest plate reward. But the pillars of this strategy, you can use these for all the Lost Sectors. Now, this is K1 Crew Quarters. This is the end of the Hunter run. I will show you the end of the Warlock run so you can see the times are pretty similar. And this will be a full run on the Titan because I do believe the Titan chest plate is probably the most desirable because of its actual perk, which you will see all three chest plates and their perks in this video. But while they're coming up on screen, we're going to talk a little bit about the strategies you're going to use for this. So I use the same weapons. I used Nightwatch Scout Rifle, I used uh, Tyranny of Heaven, which is the Last Wish Solar Bow, I've got explosive rounds on mine, and I used the Sub-Zero Salvo. The reason I used a, that rocket launcher, obviously rockets got a buff and I'm very pleased to be able to use rockets again, but on this Lost Sector, it was double arc burn. So you want to match whatever the burn is, you want to match your main DPS weapon with that. Whatever the incoming damage is, you want to make sure you have double resist of that on your chest plate. If you've got double resist, you can tank more of the shots. There are a couple of other just rules of thumb, which I will explain when I'm when we're doing the run. But the other main things, I'm also running, because I'm using the solar explosive weapon, I'm running a war main cell build. Because the other perk in this is, or the other modifier, negative modifier is hot knife. So all the shanks have solar shields, hence that's why I'm using a solar explosive bow. Those explosions, if you've got Wrath of Rasputin, and I can't remember if it's Wrath of Rasputin, you'll see it in the video here. Wrath of Rasputin or, or a Rage of the War Mind. I think it's Wrath of Rasputin. Solar splash damage kills will create what can create War Mind cells. And that goes for explosive damage, as long as it's not a crit. It just seems if the body shot from an explosive round kills the ad, that counts as a solar splash damage. So all three characters I used uh, Arc subclass on, and I kind of saved my super for the end after I have took the boss out. There should be some ads lying about. That was the only time I really used the, the subclass. I chose to do the full run on the Titan, as I've said, because the Titan's exo exotic's probably the most desirable, but... I wouldn't say the Titan struggled with us because he didn't. But he was he was the one that intrinsically had more work to do because the Warlock has a rift, the Hunter has a um, uh, dodge reload. So there were the, you know, I felt they had little kind of things above what the what the Titan did. But you'll see by the time it was a 6-7 minute run as well. As of as of recording this, I have also done K1 Revelations, which is a little bit longer than this one, and I will be putting that one up straight after this. And just when these when these law sectors come around with the chest plate, doesn't matter if it's master or legend, as I've said, I reckon legend's the best way to do it because there's no difference in the drop rate. Uh, then you can use these guides to farm them. As I say, two runs on each character. Literally two runs on each character, I got the exotic. So I think efficiency and flawlessness, just not dying, really contributes to the drop rate. I've never struggled to get these to drop, these exotics from the Lost Sectors. So let's talk a little bit about the strategy. So you can see there, I when I came into this Lost Sector, as I will do with a lot of these, I pick a position where I have cover readily available, and I take out the, as many of the ads as I can from there, using that that's the safety of that cover. Champions, you don't really want to trade shots with champions. You just when you stop them, you just want them out of there. Hence why I'm using my main DPS weapon, which is my rocket launcher, is matching the, the burn. So it's doing more damage as well. So when it comes to an overload, I'm gonna disrupt the overload with the bow because I've got overload bone, obviously. And then I'm just gonna rocket, reload, rocket. I do kind of mess that up on this next overload, but that's literally 
I'm not going to make any excuses, but I, w I was on the phone when I was doing this. <laughs> so I, I kind of was concentrating and kind of momentarily, momentarily lost my concentration at that part. So my apologies, but as you can see, it didn't really harm the run. With the barriers, I kind of do it the same way as well. I put a couple of shots with the scout rifle on the barrier. And then I reload. I don't get the barrier down to where we put his barrier up. I put like five or six shots on and then I reload. So that when the barrier puts his shield up, I've still got enough in the magazine to be able to break the shield. The other thing is, you'll notice here, I've kind of pushed up to this position because where I took the barrier from, when I came in here, I took the, as many of the ads as I could on the left. And then I pushed up to the top of this kind of rise of this hill. And what that allowed me to do is it allowed me almost to head glitch the champion because the champion couldn't shoot me. Now you'll see exactly that, that that's working practice right there that I pushed up and I don't have a defendable position now. Uh, what I mean so is going to bounce off. And the marauders are the real, the real danger here. Just take out the last of the exploders. The marauders are the real danger there because you can't really track them. So just be careful, there's like six or eight marauders. Just be careful that you make sure that there's nothing in front of you. Really is methodic, methodical. Clear out the section, then move up to the edge of the next section, and then clear that section out. Now you can see here, this is the one I messed up. Because I was too busy on the phone, and now I'm going toe to toe with, a, with an overload, with a bolt. I should have reloaded, put another rocket on. It's, it's, it's all good, because... I picked up heavy ammo because I've got heavy uh, rocket launcher finder and scavenger on. So I'm finding more rocket launcher ammo and I'm picking more up per brick. So as you can see there, that's exactly how you deal with the champions. If the, 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 the warlock obviously can put lunar factions on and if you're in a rift can reload faster. The hunter though has the easiest time with that dodge reload. So... Once you've cleared that section out, once you've took the overload out, there'll always be one guy hanging about up here, but make sure you take those two sniper shanks to the right before you move over here, because they are doing, they are arc snipers, and even though you can tank their shots, you'll see here, I explode these three, and that's, I get one hit, there you go, it took, took half my health away, just, just, over, just under half, if I hadn't have had double arc resist, that first shot would have had me almost dead. So as you can see here, I broke the champion's shield and then kept firing. That was to put a little bit more damage on before I rocketed to make sure that the rocket finished the champion off. Now we're going to push up here. We have we have cover. I've got one main cell there. I'm going to wait for these two snipers to go up here and just take that sniper out there. Break this one main cell and it should clear all the little hangers about up top. Now I'm not going to push up to the ramp. I've got this cover here. I've got the cover to my left. I'm in good I'm in I'm in good shape. So now I'm gonna put a couple of rockets on the boss. You have to be careful that you don't just fire for the sake of it, shoot rockets for the sake of it. You see here, I seen that immune sign. The minute I seen the, the boss go on purple, I knew that the, the champion was there and he was shielding the boss. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to entice the champion. And as you seen there, I'm just gonna put a barrier up here. Now the boss is free to attack. So I'll just put a suppressant grenade there. And I'll move back to this side. And put a couple more rockets on the boss. Which hopefully will finish the boss off. Now I can focus on the champion. So I'll reload my rocket so that I'm not putting myself in any real trouble. Break the champion's shield. Rocket should finish the champion. And now I'm going to pop my super and clear up all the ads. When I would save your super until the champion and, and, and the boss are dead. And by that time, you've probably killed most of the other ads. There'll only be a couple lying about. And that is the run. As you can see from the time, it's roughly ex the same as the hunter and the warlock. The strategy was exactly the same. So the takeaway from this is match your damage resist with whatever the incoming damage is. And match match your your DPS weapon with whatever the burn is, and that just makes your life so much more makes it so so much easier. Ammo finder, ammo scavenger for your main DPS weapon is also a plus. It's a must almost.
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. That is the run. I hope this helps you farm for your exotics. Good luck with your farm, and I will see you guys in the next video.